Hey guys, welcome back. Hey guys, welcome back and hello if you are new. My name is Sarah and I'm so glad that you're here. I've been trying to kind of change up my content style as of late. Um, I still do a lot of sit down videos as you guys saw with my last video, but I've been really liking more of like a vlog just kind of day-to-day -day format. I think it's really fun. It's fun to create and I feel just a lot more inspired to do so. And so um, I hope you guys have been enjoying it. Please let me know down below if you've been liking these videos. But today's video is another kind of cozy fall vlog, but just kind of spookified. This is more of a Halloween themed video. So in this video, I'm going to share with you guys my Halloween decorations. I think they turned out so, so good this year and I can't wait to share them with you. I'm also sharing with you guys um, some movie re recommendations for your rest of your month of October if you're looking for some spooky and scary movies or shows. I also have a Halloween playlist for your trick-or-treating and Halloween parties that are coming up and I also want to share with you guys um, my October TBR and kind of where I'm at in that um, I went on like a mass shopping spree for books recently I just couldn't stop and so I completely overcommitted and was a little bit presumptuous um, and thought that I would be able to read all of these and that's absolutely not happening but that's okay because I plan on reading them through November and then maybe Maybe switching gears for a little bit and going more holiday themed in December and then going back to um, the rest of them in January and I know a lot of us also do that too I know a lot of you guys read all year round spooky books but um, also just kind of go and finish kind of October to November so I have a bunch of um, some new releases some older releases some more obscure ones and I'm really excited to share them with you so I have a bunch of books <laughs> and I also want to share with you guys um, some boot buckets. So if you guys haven't seen my last video, I will have it linked um, in a card above, but I share with you guys my spooky boo bucket slash baskets um, for this past year and everyone loved them they were super super well loved and liked and um, so I definitely would still recommend those items in that video but if you're looking for some inspiration if you like to give boo buckets later in the year or around Halloween um, the actual Halloween then definitely check out that video I have ideas for my two daughters I have ideas for my husband my mom and the teachers so um, it turned out so good and I had so much fun um, filling them this year but in that video I also shared with you guys that we were kind of all exchanging baskets and my husband and my mom got me a little boot bucket as well and all the comments you guys had left on that video were wanting to know what I got so I thought that I'd share with you guys um, a little clip of how my husband set it all up but also the actual items in it and I think that's it you may see some other stuff in here, but we'll we'll find out. So let's get the video started. We are finally getting some chillier days in Texas, and I am so excited about it. There is nothing like spending a cool morning wrapped up in a cozy blanket with a warm cup of coffee or tea and a good book and enjoying the cold, crisp patio morning. My girls have been joining me and they have been experiencing the magic that is holiday gift catalogs. That used to be some of my favorite memories I shared with my brother was circling the things that I wanted most. And be able to enjoy it with the girls has been so very fun. The little eyes light up for the promises of new gifts underneath the tree. Although it feels like I kind of just put my fall decorations up because I was a little bit behind this year, it is time to take them down and put up our Halloween decorations. I loved my fall decor items this year so if you are looking for just fall definitely go check out my last video but if you're looking for some spooky home decor and just want to feel extra spooky this is the video for you. I have used this sheet set for years. It came with a comforter that has finally been retired. I got this fresh new ruffle crisp black comforter for very inexpensive off of Amazon this year. I just wanted something plain and easy with the throw pillows to bring the pops of color. All of those throw pillow um, throw pillows are actually covers from Etsy. Even the new one up in the front right there that is supposed to look embroidered. I love it. It is so cute. And I just think it turned out so good this year. The throw blankets are from Target. These beautiful set of like tree branch lights that go from orange to purple are from Amazon. And I feel like they just give like that spooky magical touch across the frame of our canopy bed. We then have our 
spooky shelves. It took me forever to figure out what I wanted to do with them this year, and I'm still not certain I actually love how they turned out, but it's okay, because this is how they're staying. But we have our spooky shelves put in, and our little book framed art hanging underneath like we had at our old place and I still love it. It still makes me super excited to come in and I feel like the, a little witch lives here and th that's where all of her spells and potions and um, books are waiting for her to come and make some magic. I have this adorable little ghost garland that I got I think last year from Home Goods, I believe and it just hung perfectly on our windowsill and everything in this room just turned out so cute and spooky wasn't a whole lot of big changes but it did make a big impact and it's so fun to have like a halloween themed ambient room in the background or a spooky movie on reading a spooky book with a of course way too many hot beverages um but it's been magical in there now we go downstairs and give our little entrance mudroomish area a little zhuzhing a little reef fresh and I just basically used all of past and previous decor items. Again, I was trying to be really intentional with my decor items this year and only buy new things that really felt like they added to the stuff I already had. All of this stuff is old and it looked perfect in that space. I was so sad to take down my living room or our library area because I loved how it turned out for fall this year, but I love it even more for with our Halloween decor and I can't wait for you guys to see it. I turned on my lo-fi, spooky ghost mix which is so good i highly recommend lo-fi girl if you've never checked her out before i gathered all of my previous halloween decor items and i got to decorating this room took me so long because i kept changing my mind over and over again so you're going to see decor items in certain places and then them be completely changed in the next place because i couldn't figure it out i used my mrs myers fall leaves scent this year this is a new one for me i normally go with a different one but i went with this one this year and i loved it it smells really clean and crisp and just like a fresh fall day all right, this is my absolute favorite piece of decor I pretty much own, and it is a hand-me-down from um, my mom. It's something that I've been just dying to get passed down to me for years, and she decided that this was the year. Um, it was actually given to her by my grandmother, and she actually made that little ghosty because um, she was an incredible artist, and that was a little paper mache ghost that she put there. This was from 1979, and it was $22, and it is my prized possession. I love it so much. I was so excited to use it in this room this year. I toiled over this space. It took me hours, but it finally came together. That's actually a vintage kanji dish also passed on from my mother last year, and I love all the classic um, Halloween costumes on it. We picked up this mirror that I've been wanting to get for a number of months now and decided just to bite the bullet, and I'm so glad that we did. It's from Walmart, and it just tied in the space so perfectly. Most everything else is all old decorations that I've just reused, except for that cute little um, cardboard house that I got from Target this year, and I feel like balanced all that um, just classic, vintage -y, spooky Halloween decor, which is very much the um, Halloween decor that is my absolute favorite. Now my girls are helping me get our spooky little witch cauldron area ready. We made this last year and it turned out so good and I had to reuse it again because I really loved it. We have this little cauldron which I believe, believe was from Michael's last year and a bunch of spooky potion bottles and candles and um, spell books and that are just really old books that have been passed down through my family for years and years. I got this adorable little um, crystal ball that is super tiny but so cute in this space it just like has a little pop of something I also have that little new potion blue potion bottle it's a little love potion in the back and I just love how the space turned out it just looks like a witch a little space for a witch to come in to cast her spells and make magical potions in her cauldron that's just waiting for her to come home from all of her witchy adventures of course, I had to use my Halloween tree and turn it on over here. It's on my record player. And now we are going to underneath the fireplace. I'm just 
again, moving our books and uh, flameless candles that are there year round and kind of just mixing and matching and how things turned out. I used all um, pumpkins and little jack lanterns and a cute little cat, like kind of blow mold um, style lamp that it was all from last year. And I love how it turned out. Now we're moving over to my bookshelf. I took everything down and dusted. This is a space that I'm not entirely in love with, um, but it definitely turned out pretty cute. I just, I think next year I'll try something different. I tried to kind of make each shelf a different theme. Eh, I like it, but I don't love it. Um, but it still turned out nice, and this is kind of where we're leaving it for now. It was an incredibly spooky night with an incredible thunderstorm, which we don't get this good of a thunderstorm very often, and so I took full advantage of it. I had a deliciously spooky snack of a Dracula blood orange that I felt like I was eating pure blood out of, but I loved every second of it. And then I've been obsessed with these Olipops. This is a great flavor. I haven't tried any other one, even any other flavors yet. I need to, but I've been obsessed with them. And my little it's spooky um, season cup that I got from Etsy a couple years ago. And I got my Halloween PJ set up with some cute ghosty or skeleton socks to match. Took a wonderful shower with um, this Native uh, body wash. I've been obsessed with Native products as of late. It's a new find for me. Um, they have been so good. Then I'm doing my skincare, some retinol, because I'm starting to get a little older, you know? Gotta keep the, the skin as fresh and taken care of as possible, so we're using some retinol cream. And then this moisturizer that I'm about to show you is a fantastic moisturizer. It's super incredibly hydrating. It's very... Um, just like basic, it's perfect for sensitive skin. It doesn't clog your pores. I mean, this cream has been around forever and ever and ever, but it's giant, it's a great price, and sometimes the basics are the best. After my cozy shower, I get in my cozy bed and put on my um, skeleton sockies, and then we are going to start one of my books. Now, this was the day before um, I was able to decorate, so that's why my spooky bedding isn't on, but I want to share this with you because it was like a fun, spooky night that ended up turning out really great. So um, I'm starting the unfortunate side effect of magic and I've talked to you guys about that in my last video So definitely go check that one out if you want to kind of know about it But I had some ghost dots. They were so delicious. So many of you guys said that you also um, Enjoy dots with either your grandfather or your dad and it these were wonderful. I wish he was here to enjoy them with me. Now, this is how my husband set up my boot basket when I came home. He put confetti. That's all like paper confetti, which was a huge mess. And he was like, I'm never doing that again. It was such a bad idea, but it was a thought that counts. Um, and these all are flameless candles that you will see that we ended up hanging up later. Um, and he got me just such sweet items that were so thoughtful and exactly things that I wanted. And I was so excited to receive them, but I'll go more in depth with you guys about each item in a little bit. But we hung up the floating candles, which was quite literally my favorite thing I've ever had. Um, I cried <laughs> after we turned them on because it was just so magical. And this space turned out so beautiful. You just want to turn them on. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It still, it still gets me. I This room is my favorite thing I have ever been in. All right, we are going to decorate our Kindle case for Halloween now. Just like in the last video, I showed you guys that I just get a clear Kindle case. This is from Amazon. And then underneath it, I just put a bunch of different stickers that fit the aesthetic and the vibe that I'm going for during that time. Um, I don't take the backing off any of the stickers, that way they're reusable. I just put them and place them on top of my Kindle and then put my clear cover on top to kind of hold them together. Here's where I keep all of my uh, stickers. I get them from Etsy, Amazon, Timu, all over, wherever I just like them. I order some packs. Um, I, you can also easily make them yourself. Then I kind of just like um, put them all together, kind of use it like a puzzle experience or a collage experience. It's really, really relaxing. I actually really enjoy doing this and it can take me up to like 30, 45 minutes, even an hour sometimes. Um, and I just really enjoy it. I feel like it's just like a fun activity. It gets me more in the vibes of the spooky season or whatever I'm decorating for. And it's just really relaxing. Um, and it's a good way to be able to kind of personalize your Kindle if you like doing that. Um, and just collecting stickers. If you're a sticker gal or a guy, boy, yourself, 
myself. Um, I really enjoy doing it. But once I have done the collage that I want, I just stick the um, clear case back on and then I actually take off the pop socket. It's removable um, by like these little like tabs underneath it. I just take off the top part of it and then I place whatever new one I want to place on it. This one's my little full moon. I was supposed to get some Halloween ones, but they got lost. So it's okay. We're going for a full moon on Halloween vibe, but this is how it turned out and I loved it. I think it looks so adorable. All right, it's super cold today. Well, it started really cold, like in the 40s, which is kind of abnormal for October in Texas, but I was here for it. It's been freezing all day, and then the sun comes out and it feels like it's like roasting in this room, but that's okay because my really hot coffee from this morning has now turned into cold slash iced coffee because I didn't finish it. All right, so let me quickly share with you guys what um, I got in my boot bucket this year, and I'm so excited. These items were so good. Um, my mom and husband did such a good job. So my mom, um, my mom got me um, a number of little treats and a cute little Halloween-themed kind of like tote bag, um, and then this was the main thing that she got me, which is what I have been wanting so badly. <laughs> And this is a um, blood chalice from Bath and Body ba Bath and Body Works. Bath and Body Works. It's actually a um, three wick candle holder, so it holds like the big old large chunky candles. I actually haven't been putting a large candle in it. I've actually just been putting a um, little like flameless smaller candle in it, and I, you know, it doesn't bother me. I think it's cute. But this is on a timer, so at night it all lights up. And it looks so cool. Um, this was $39.95, but they've been having lots of sales on their Halloween stuff. And so um, I think she got it for like $19, but we never managed to get the Halloween themed candle holders. And they had so many of them in stock this year, which I find really interesting. I feel like Halloween, like you couldn't get enough of it and everyone was just buying up all the decorations. And so a lot of the stores like overbought and people weren't buying as much this year. Uh, at least that's what I've noticed. Have you guys noticed that in stores? There's like still decor everywhere where it feels like the past like two three years maybe during the pandemic since everyone was home more often they were just like constantly decorating their spaces and trying to make it feel cozy and now that you know more people are back in the office and stuff like that I feel like not as many people are buying stuff this year I don't know that's just me anyway but I love this I think it's so freaking cool I if you guys don't know I'm obsessed with vampires. I've been obsessed with vampires for as long as I can remember. I love vampires. It started with Buffy the Vampire Slayer. It is only grown. And so that chalice was a must have and I love it. Okay, so from Jazz, um, I will insert a clip showing you kind of in detail, but um, he got me a set of the floating Halloween candles, flameless candles that um, are kind of like all over TikTok. And they've been out for a number of years and I've really wanted them, but a lot of them didn't have remotes yet. And now they came out with a remote, but let me get it. It's a wand and I just, I saw this and I was like, I have to have this. I've been wanting it for months. Um, and so he surprised me with them and had them like light, lit like a pathway up the stairs. Um, but we ended up hanging them the next day and it turned out so, so good. I cried afterwards because I'm a big softie, but it's just because it made me feel so cozy and happy. And this room has transformed into this like little reflection of my like inner little heart and soul. And so um, these just added the very special touch. This was the best boo bucket gift and I highly highly recommend them I think they would be perfect for Christmas time they're perfect for all year I don't plan on taking these suckers down they are my favorite I love them so um, I believe he got these on Amazon um, and I they kind of blew up all over TikTok so if you want more videos I definitely would um, google them because or go on TikTok because you will find a ton of them the next thing that he got me is this little book light um, I have been reading a lot more like physical copies of books like um, paperbacks and hardbacks. Um, I used to read predominantly on my Kindle and so it was backlit with no problem, but since I have space in a little library, I've been wanting to um, get more physical hard copy books and read from there. And so sometimes I like to stay up a little too late and my husband's already gone to bed. And so to kind of not disturb him, um, I have been trying to read in really low lighting, but it's been really hard to see. So he picked me up a little book light um, and it's in lime green, which I love green it's my favorite color but I really like this one because there's like a nice strong metal clip in the back back so you can clip it onto the back of your book and then um, the light actually turns and twists but there's like multiple different light modes 
which is nice and it also changes the type of like color of lights. So you have a little bit more of like a fluorescent light and then more of like a warm toned light and there's two different um, like modes and strengths to the light, I guess I would say, I don't know. Anyway, brightness levels, there we go. Anyway, I like this one a lot. I think this was from Amazon and I don't think it was super crazy expensive. The next thing he got me, which is going to be a bit controversial, is um, this Co Co Cos Cosrx C-O-S-R-O-X um, Advanced Snail 92 All-in-One Cream. And this is formulated with 92% snail secretion, filtrate slash mucin, and this cream helps naturally create the appealing glow of healthy skin. And if you've never heard of this, and you just heard what the sentence I just read, you definitely heard that right. This is essentially snail mucus. So, for a lot of people, that is a big, uh-uh, that ain't gonna happen. Um, however, for me, I have been very pleased <laughs> with this. This kind of blew up. I think I kind of found out about this a couple years ago through like beauty channels on YouTube, but I think recently this has kind of blown up more on TikTok. And they come in a different, lots of different types. You can get like a serum. I think that there's a spray toner, but this is the, like a moisturizer. And I don't know if you can see it, but it is like nothing I've ever used before. It feels kind of like glue and slime and mucus. <laughs> But in a good way, um, basically you are supposed to have like moist, damp, and skin, and then you pat this into your skin and it helps kind of keep it hydrated and kind of seal and lock in that moisture, helps it glow. I have been loving this. I think it's been so nice for my skin, especially because as of late, I've been trying to use more actives, some retinol. I'm trying to reverse some aging. You know, there's nothing wrong with aging, but I am trying to protect my skin a little bit better. And so I need something that's a bit hydrating um, and really gonna lock in that moisture. And this has been really great. Now, for some of you, this is a no-go. We're not, you were absolutely not wanting to put snail mucus on your face, and that's totally fine. For some of you, um, you know, who are curious, I would definitely recommend it. This is a K-Beauty brand, and as we know, Korean um, beauty and skincare is like the best, and so I think this is a lot more like common um, and popular over there, and it's starting to kind of like travel west. Um, and kind of becoming popular over here. So I'm really excited. I want to say that they have like synthetic versions of that mucin and like um, non-animal related options if you, that is something that you want to try. I want to say that they do, but I'm not positive on that, so don't quote me. Um, but that is like kind of the original one. And I'm really happy with it so far. The next thing, also, I think they sell that on Amazon and I want to say in Ulta now, maybe in Sephora but I definitely know that it's on Amazon. Um, next thing, this is kind of like, the last three items haven't, or the last two items haven't been particularly Halloween or fall themed, um, and this one really isn't either, but it's a little bit more on the like fall spectrum or the Halloween spectrum. Um, I have seen a lot of like boo buckets and baskets that husbands have purchased like the Ugg slippers, the little I keep wanting to say Telluride, and I absolutely know that it's not what they're called. I don't know. The half, like, Ugg slippers, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, or Uggs themselves, or slippers, or cozy socks. You know, something cozy. And my husband knows me incredibly well and knows that this is more my style. So, um, these are from the brand Soda. I want to say these are from Amazon. I've been really, really wanting a heeled kind of platform style Chelsea boot. I have a pair of more like pointed toed flat Chelsea boots and then a pair of rain boot Chelsea boots and I love the style. I just think that they look so good with everything. They're incredibly comfortable, but I wanted something a little bit more sassy, something a little bit more, um, you know, gothy and witchy and wonderful. And so these fit the bill perfectly. I love them. They're incredibly comfortable. I could walk for hours in these and not have a problem. The only thing I will say, and that's just because I need to break it in, is this is still a little stiff up here. And so if you're not wearing these with sock, like high socks or tights or like leggings and pants and stuff where you can kind of tuck it in, I feel like well, it did kind of rub against my like shins and ankles area, but once these actually like become a little bit more broken down and in, I think it'll be fine. Other than that though, like I have loved these. I love these. All right, so I have two books that my husband also picked up for me um, that I've been wanting for a while. And so that's gonna kind of transform us and travel us into my October TBR. Um, but the two books that he picked up for me were Assistant to the Villain and Ravenfall. 
The assistant to the villain, I love the dyed painted red sides. I love when books have like just fun pages or painted pages or sprayed pages. I think it just adds something special to it and makes it feel more magical. Anyway, this is like a pretty popular book, I feel like. Um, it's called Assistant to the Villain. I wanna see that there's another one in this series. And essentially, from what I can understand, this is a book about a girl named Evie or Evie. Evie um, and she has sick family members that she has um, to take care of and protect and so she needs to make money to take care of them so she is looking for a job and she ends up finding um, employment with the town's most infamous villain um, and so she decides to go ahead and work for him become his assistant ie the title um, but along the way she ends up starting to develop feelings for him and falling in love with him which leads to a host of complications but no more so than the fact that um, someone wants to take over the kingdom and the villain so um, she wants to protect him as well as protect her family and kind of everything that ensues with that I think that's the basics basis of this um, definitely not good at book synopsis I shared that with you guys last time all right this next book is called Ravenfall by Kaylin Josephson um, this is a middle grade kind of spooky novel. I've been wanting to read more middle grade novels. One, because I want to be able to read um, and share them with my oldest now that she's old enough to kind of start getting into middle grade books. Um, but also because middle grade novels are just so good. They're spooky and there's a whimsical and like enchanting quality about them because yes, they're spooky, but they're not like terrifying and scary and filled with a bunch of gore and horror, um, which, you know, it has a place, don't get me wrong, but there's just something that's almost a little bit even more scary about a middle grade like spooky book because it has, it really like elicits the uh, imagination. You know what I'm saying? Um, anyway, <laughs> I saw this from Darlene Desi. She posted about wanting to read it or starting to read it and I immediately went and researched it um, and thought it sounded so good. And so my husband surprised me with this one as well and Basically, it is about a girl and she lives in this really spooky, cool inn um, with her family and the Ravenfall Inn has a bunch of magical powers um, and is a basically a sentient being in and itself and inside of it uh, hosts a bunch of different magical creatures who stay but also humans alike and this play takes place during the days or maybe a couple of weeks before Samhain which I really really appreciate that them talk uh, them talking about which is actually where we um, as a western culture where Halloween came from and you don't normally get to really um, hear or read too much about that and so that's been really really fun um, but it takes place during that time and Annabella as well as her sisters and her family all possess magical powers and she unfortunately doesn't love her power because um, basically when she touches somebody she can see death so essentially she sees through their eyes if they've experienced death and seen someone die which i can only imagine being so incredibly traumatic i would not want that power that sounds like a curse to me anyway she ends up seeing a really traumatic death and murder take place um and this boy, I cannot remember his name, his boy, this boy named Colin's family was the person who was, the family who was murdered, and now he is trying to solve their murder, and now that she has seen it through the murderer's eyes, um, she is trying to help him solve the family's murder. Um, I am like a sixth of the way through um of this book so far and i can just tell you that it's so cute i really enjoyed it i really like the writing um it is definitely spooky so i would definitely recommend it it's so far so good and perfect 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 for this time of year spooky and a touch scary but absolutely like fall and halloween and Samhain themed I just love it. So these are the two books that he got me. So let's continue on the book journey, shall we? These are all of my <laughs> October TBRs, not including those two. Obviously, I know I'm not gonna be able to get all to them, but these are all of my kind of spooky slash fall themed reads that I wanted to read this month slash next month slash probably in January. 
Um, the first one that I'm going to share with you is A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. Um, this is actually the book pick of October for a book club that I am in. And um, this is something that kind of like popped out of popped up out of nowhere that I feel like I've seen tons of people talk about recently. And honestly, I don't know too much about it. <laughs> I just started it last night and fell asleep promptly on page seven. So I have not gotten very far, um, but I do know that it's very much heavy dark academia themes. It takes place at a gothic style college. Um, and I want to say the main character, which I believe his name is... So the book synopsis is Effie Sayre has always believed in fairy tales. She's had no choice since childhood. She's been haunted by visions of the fairy king. She's found solace only in the pages of Anagard, Emery's Meridian's beloved epic about a mortal girl who falls in love with the fairy king and then destroys him. Effie's tattered copy is all that's keeping her afloat through her first term at the prestigious Lyrian Architectural College. So when Meridian's family announces a contest to redesign the late author's estate, Effie feels certain this is her destiny. But Hyreth Manor is an impossible task, a musty, decrepit house on the brink of crumbling into a hungry sea. And when Effie arrives, someone else has already made a temporary home there. Preston Hellery, a stodgy young literature scholar, is determined to prove Effie's favorite author is a fraud. As the two rival students investigate the reclusive author's legacy, piecing together clues through his letters, books, and diaries, they discover that the house's foundation isn't the only thing that can't be trusted. There are dark forces, both mortal and magical, conspiring against them, and the truth may bring them both to ruin. So I've heard nothing but good things. Everyone who's read this so far has loved it. Like I said, we're reading this for October book of the month. Um, so we'll see. I'm excited to continue down the path. It sounds... I haven't read anything like this, so I'm, I'm excited. Um, I do think this is a YA novel. This next book is called The Coven by Harper L. Woods. Um, I picked this up. I have read a little bit of it so far. Honestly, eh. Um, I feel like it had like really good bones, like it was really going somewhere, and then this kind of had this like instant love kind of thing going on, and I am not an instant love kind of gal. That's just not my trope. And so we'll see. I want a little bit more enemies to lovers and it's not quite the tension that I was hoping. So I think I'll continue it, but so far, uh -huh, it's on my TBR, but I don't know how I feel about it. I may totally change my mind, so that's why I'm sharing it with you, but that is one that I do plan on finishing and reading. The next book is called Morbidly Yours and this is Ivy Fairbanks. Honestly, I don't know how I stumbled upon this book. Um, I don't know how I figured out about this book. I don't think I saw it on any like, YouTube or TikTok or something. I don't know how I discovered this book, but I think it is like a smaller published novel. Um, but the reviews on Goodreads are fantastic. And I love mortuary science. And I feel like if I had the stomach for it, I would totally have gone into it and become a mortician. Um, especially after my dad passed away, I think that there's something very comforting and kind of, I don't know, it was comforting for me kind of like deep diving into mortuary science and kind of everything that took place during the um, just process and the burial process and getting him prepped and ready and I don't know, there's just something that I think is really comforting about it. Um, it's also slightly terrifying and I don't think that I could stomach a lot of the tragedy and like the heartache that comes with it, but it's fascinating and so I really enjoy listening to podcasts and reading like nonfiction novels about it. Um, but I randomly stumbled upon this one, and this is actually about um, this man named Callum Flannelly, and he is a grave digger and then wants to in inherit his family's undertaking business and carry on their legacy um, under one condition. He must marry before his 35th birthday. Um, so it's out of the mortuary and into the dating scene. Lark which I love that name for a girl, Thompson would rather get crushed by a falling anvil than live next to a funeral home during her stay in Galloway, Ireland. Oh, that's right. It takes place in Ireland. Absolutely down. The vivacious American cartoon creator and animator came here to embrace life, not be reminded of losing her husband. When Lark learns of Callum's dilemma and aversion to marrying out of necessity rather than love, she agrees to help the introverted mortician. Although sworn off of love herself, she's optimistic that Callum can find the one and secure his inheritance. Basically, fake dating in Ireland, 
with a like wonderful like interesting way to set it up like i love the fact that this is dealing with like just grief and loss and obviously her going through that and overcoming that as well as him who that's his day to day um i don't know i just thought it was so interesting and it just sounded sweet and cute and again the reviews have been phenomenal so really excited plus look at the cover it's just so cute i love it I don't know. I thought it was perfect for October. Next, this was like a really popular one, I feel like. Um, I think this was book of the month with the book of the month pick, either last month or the month before. I want to say September, maybe. Anyway, this is You Again. It's a novel by Kate Goldbeck. Um, I got it mostly because of the cover. Like, that is one of the most beautiful covers I have ever seen. The camera does not do it justice. In person, this is so vivid and beautiful. It makes me think of When Harry Met Sally, which is I definitely think the vibe that it's going for. Um, I honestly don't know much about it besides that it's a romance taking place, I want to say, in New York City. Yes, so it takes place in New York. It is a friends with benefits story. It is about a um, boy named Josh and a girl named Ari, and they end up finding out that they are having relations with the same woman um, which is kind of like a fun twist i don't think i've really read that in a story before and then they get together and have friends with benefits and i'm sure love blossoms from that so it's called you again i just thought it looked really cute and um again the cover is just phenomenal so this is just something that i think next month i'm just gonna have displayed because i love displaying my books um because it's so pretty so the synopsis of this book is that there's a girl named Iris and she lives in kind of a paranormal society where there are witches and um, vampires and just ma other magical creatures. Um, and within that, they all have different types of powers and different types of abilities, essentially. Um, and she doesn't know her abilities as of yet. She doesn't have anything special. And so she's kind of been kind of the underdog and the like odd men out the black sheep essentially of her family and i guess society she doesn't do super well with careers and jobs and she's kind of like in a between a rock and a hard place financially when she did uh she ends up inheriting her aunt's um in and so she moves to um i want to say it's like in illinois or somewhere random but she moves into this victorian beautiful house and she ends up trying to essentially kind of um fix it up and turn it into an inn and basically she winds up renting rooms like a Victorian spinster collecting other lost souls and not all of them are human. So basically she just has a place for all the other underdogs and black sheeps and kind of a found family trope. There's also romance um, and I just thought it was really sweet and cute. I've been listening to the audiobook a little bit already um, and I can't do the because it's not um, from a male and a female and I, I struggle really hard when they're the uh, female narrator reads from a male's perspective and they try to make it more like deep and masculine sounding I can't I can't sometimes it's just too hard and too cringe so um I got the paperback so that I could read it um myself and not have to listen to it but so far so good I think that the actual like um setting and just the plot sounds really cute and sweet and i love the idea of like a found family found family between like mytho mythological creatures and monsters all right the last two books are a little bit more on the darker side so i found this one this is called house of hunger and this is um by the author alexis henderson i have never read anything by this author or have really ever heard about this book this is just another thing that darling desi had recommended reading if you were into vampires i know nothing i don't know the, i don't know the plot i don't know the synopsis i'm going honestly in there completely blind i don't even want to read it because i just want to go in there and just enjoy it all i know is that it's about vampires it's gothic and dark um, and it's for fans of Anne Rice. So deliciously, delicious like a modern day Anne Rice. Henderson has a gift for creating a world engorged with desire and death. So I'm assuming it's gonna be pretty dark and pretty morbid and pretty gothic and wonderful and vampiric. So um, House of Hunger, I think that the cover is beautiful and uh, very spooky. Um, and yet another vampire novel because I can't stop. This is S.T. Gibson's A Dowry of Blood. I know that I have read her other stuff and I cannot for the life of me think about what it is, but 
I am a part of multiple Facebook groups. <laughs> Um, that's the main thing to get on Facebook for now. I love groups. I feel like, like an, like I'm, I am, I guess, middle-aged at this point in life, but I feel like a middle-aged divorcee or something. Like, I'm constantly looking on the Facebook groups because... I just love them. I find them super comforting. I love that sense of community, especially in this post-pandemic world. There's just like this sense of like urgency to belong, but also not knowing how to kind of like readapt to society and get back out there. And so these groups have just been so nice. So I'm a part of like so many different like home decor groups or Taylor Swift groups or multiple book groups. And one of them um, is like a romance book group and they recommended this because I wanted something that was like The Invitation. If you guys have not seen that movie, it came out last year, I believe. It's on Netflix, definitely a great spooky vibed um, movie for this time of year. And I love the whole plot except for the end. I'm not gonna share with you what happens because I don't wanna ruin it if you guys haven't seen it, but I wish it would have been the opposite is essentially what I'm trying to say. And so I posted about that and so many people recommended this as kind of the opposite of that. Something kind of dark and gothic and romantic, but also kind of spooky and vampiric as well. Like I said, this is A Dowry of Blood and um, it is about Dracula and his ladies and the loves of his life and husbands. So um, it uh, is from the perspective of Constant Constantana and her basically marrying King Dracula um, and his other brides and kind of, I don't know, dabbling into some spiciness. So I don't know, I'm excited to read this. I think this sounds really good and interesting. Um, and I love me some drac. So those are the book recommendations and everything that I plan on reading. Hopefully that was not all over the place like I suspect that it was. All right, so we are moving on to our show options. Um, obviously, if you go on pretty much any streaming service, you can find a little like category that has like Halloween picks of the month or spooky or whatever. And of course, a lot of them are all great and wonderful and some of them probably have these options in them. But if you're looking for something a little bit more niche or just something different, then I have the list for you. So I'm gonna start with shows. Um, and the first one is Pretty Little Liars Original Sin. Now, the original Pretty Little Liars definitely has its spookiness, its creepy vibe, moment there's a lot of like fall especially in the beginning it's very like fall and autumnal um i love that show don't get me wrong like i one read the books two loved the show but three they just threw it down the tubes with the writing i will never forgive those last couple of seasons and the ridiculousness and twists and turns that they decided to take and i oh ugh, ugh. but it's still good, especially at the beginning, as long as it follows the be uh, the books. But Pretty Little Liars Original Sin premiered last year, and it's a darker, more slasher version of Pretty Little Liars. There's still an A, um, but it goes to back to the past um, into this like dark tragedy that happened that these group of friends are trying to uncover because it um, ties in with their moms and something that their moms have done in the past um, and why they're connected and being targeted now. And so um, the girls are trying to discover the past and the tragedy and the murder and everything that happened back then while also having a target on their backs from A. Um, and A is, in part a really creepy character who has a tragic backstory as well but also it's just creepy man it's, it's very slasher masked face vibes creepy 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 but it's not too scary or over the top it definitely feels spooky and scary but kind of cheesy at the same time the writing isn't the best and there's some things that happen that you're just like what but for the most part it's just really fun to watch and the reason that i really really enjoyed it was the aesthetics that they chose for this show um the color palette the set the just like vibe and the aesthetics of the show were so good and so spot on it gives very much like sabrina slash riverdale vibes where this kind of like vintage old timey classic look kind of comic-y and um 
there's all these really deep rich tones and it just screams autumnal it takes place during autumn there are um there's a halloween episode and a halloween party and the decorations are the like vintage classic spooky decorations which just is my classic halloween decor that is my favorite and so i think it's just really fun to watch during this time of year and it's just it's cheesy and silly but it's fun and it's spooky and i just love the vibe the next thing, um, the next thing, and kind of goes in hand in hand of that is season one of Riverdale, um, maybe season two, but I definitely feel like season one has the similar vibes and aesthetic. It's spooky. You're trying to figure out kind of what happened, like a murder mystery to kind of solve. Um, before the writing started getting really crazy and insane, I know that the show just wrapped and ended. I stopped watching after I think like season three when things started just going, you're just like, what? Trying to keep up. But season one, I remember watching it and just loving it. I loved the aesthetics, the vibe, the costumes, the characters. Um, I definitely recommend at least watching the first season and just kind of enjoying it for the aestheticness that it is. And Sabrina. Um, obviously, Sabrina the Teenage Witch with Melissa Joan Hart is fantastic and a little bit more campy and fun and comedic. And I want to say that's on HBO Max or Paramount. I can't remember which one. Um, but the newer Sabrina remake is definitely a darker take on it. It's um, definitely more darker themed but um it's still fun i still love the witchy vibes of it it again has that very similar kind of like vintage um dark moody aesthetic to it and the clothing and the characters again i just the sets are just stunning i love it it's perfect for this time of year um there are some episodes again that you're just kind of like what the heck did i just watch but for the most part it's great that show also ended i think after three seasons um i haven't seen the third or four, maybe it was after four seasons. I haven't seen the last season yet, um, but I really, really did enjoy at least season one, and so I would recommend it for this time of year as well. Another, like, you can't go wrong is Vampire Diaries. That is my comfort show. That is a show that I rewatch at least once a year. There's something that is just so, like, comforting about that show for me, and I don't know what it is because it's not a cozy show. It's not like Gilmore Girls or Friends or anything like that. It's dark and like gory and like kind of sad a lot of times, but it is such a good show. If you've never seen it before, you are absolutely missing out. I love it. Um, all of the fodum, 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 fall and autumn vibes and just feeling like cool and vampire-y and wanting to wear like leather jackets and like skinny jeans and boots. I don't know. I will forever love that show. We'll always, always rewatch it. I got my husband hooked on it. He loves it. We've rewatched it together multiple times. If you've never seen it, you gotta watch it. Again, that show was on for like nine 10 seasons it was on for a really long time and the writing at the end pfft, went downhill i completely stop after a certain point in that show because it's just so bad um but i will again when i get to that certain point i just rewatch the last episode and i sob every single time but i highly recommend that show wonderful another kind of spooky more cozy show um, that is a cartoon is over the garden wall that has definitely feel like blown up in popularity more recently um, There's just this cozy fall Aspect to it where you just kind of feel like you're getting a warm hug, but then they have like these crazy like action scenes or like just over the top like ridiculous like just it's so fun and kind of outlandish and crazy but then there's just like this cozy aspect to it i've never really seen another cartoon like it it does make me think kind of like adventure time kind of esque um or like gravity falls but more cozy like i love the tones of the show the aesthetics the color palette the color story it's just it's beautiful and they have really wonderful music to it um i have a number of the songs actually i think on my autumn playlist um but it's perfect it's perfect for fall it's perfect for this month of october it's called Over the Garden Wall. I highly recommend it. I want to say that it's on um, Paramount, but I'm not positive. It's definitely on a streaming, maybe HBO. It's definitely a streaming, but I just don't know which show or which streaming service it's on. But I definitely recommend it if you haven't seen it. I'm sure that if you watch videos like this, you've probably heard of it. It's definitely sweet and cute. 
um, and it feels like it's gonna be like this like completely 100% wholesome show, which it is, but then they have like random like werewolf attack and it's just like kind of action packed and you're like, what the heck? The last two things, or the last thing that I wanna watch this year is the new Ghostbumps remake with Justin Long. Looks so spooky and so good. It's TV 14. I know that they just um, added the Goosebump like original shows, I wanna say on Netflix, um, which were classics and cheesy and wonderful, but they brought out this um, new season of Goosebumps and it looks so good. Justin Long, I love and I will watch him in anything. And more recently, I feel like I've seen him more in like scary movies again, because the first time I ever saw him was in Jeepers Creepers. And I just watched him not too long ago in um, Barbarian and now seen him in this role. He just looks spooky and creepy and I'm so here for it. And so it looks so good. Um, and that's on Disney Plus. And then I really want to watch um, on Netflix, The Midnight Club. I think it's from the makers of Haunting of Hill House and Bly Manor, Bly Manor, Bly Manor. Um, and it's called The Midnight Club. I believe it came out last year, um, but it just looks eerie and creepy and spooky and like horror and a little bit more scary, but um, still like spooky and fun. So I like the vibes of it. I wanna watch that. And then I'm only going to share with you guys one movie because I share with you a ton of shows and I'm so much more of a, a show type of gal. Um, I love movies, don't get me wrong, but man, if I want like a full aesthetic and a vibe, I just like to watch shows. But the show or the movie that I want to recommend that I feel like not a lot of people talk about for Halloween or spookiness, and you can find, you know, a ton and tons of lists of Halloween movies to watch that are spooky and scary and absolutely terrifying. But the one that I love and I will rewatch over and over and over again, one, Scream franchise. If you love slasher films, I just love it. I love the franchise, but that's not the movie. Um, Ready or Not, it came out a couple years ago. We saw it in theaters and it has this like most dangerous game aspect to it. It's creepy and um, fun at the same time and like the music just really adds a different element it takes place in this like giant estate that's like over the top and ridicu ridiculous because it's a family that has old money um, and they essentially play this game every single time one of their children gets married and whatever game that ends up getting chosen by apparently the like patriarch of the family, um, the original patriarch, their ancestor, who I guess sold his soul to you know who, um, ends up basically, you ha they have to have a sacrifice um, if this game gets chosen, and it's essentially hide and seek. So if that game gets chosen, then the family has to go in, or the bride, um, whoever got married has to hide or the groom and the family has to hunt them down and um, Before sunrise or the whole family Believes that there's a curse place on them and they will all die. So basically that's the Synopsis of the movie and you'll see what happens at the end and all of that stuff It is so good Adam Brody's in it, which is another person that I love seeing in films and movies. I love him um, and it it's just it's phenomenal it's so good it's spooky and ridiculous and crazy and like these characters and this family is just disgusting and you just are like atrocious human beings but you also are just like so like enamored with this story and this whole like curse that they have in their family and like what they'll do to like survive and stay alive anyway it's fantastic i love it um, I want to say it's on HBO Max or Max now, whatever they call it. Um, definitely recommend. It's scary. It's spooky and on, I wouldn't say it's scary. It's spooky, but it's perfect for this time of year. Perfect to turn off the lights and have like a yummy snack and just like watch it. Love it. Ready or not. So good. That is it, friends. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. The end was definitely not cozy. It was chaotic and crazy, but I hope you still enjoyed it. I'm so glad that you were here. Um, keep your eyes peeled for some more fun content coming your way. I have another vlog of our kind of era's tour experience at the movies, getting dressed up, our outfits, um, some early Christmas shopping, all of that type of stuff. So that's coming your way soon, as well as um, I thought it would be kind of fun. I recently discovered videos um, 
on here that I thought were super just relaxing as well. I'm really into the cozy vibe, if you can't tell. I just want to live and enjoy myself and enjoy my life, and slow living is my thing. And um, so, as of late, I have been watching a lot of cozy, like, just content and themed videos, especially as my seasonal depression starts coming through, um, which will happen typically after the new year. I just, uh, you know deep dive of a dark abyss for me and so I like to try to like prep for good happy things and cozy things and things that bring me joy and so I've been watching a lot of like just cozy videos and slow living videos and I've seen a lot of um kind of like read with me's and they just you just read with them so it's like you feel like you're reading you're not alone you have someone to read with and there's just something that's just, again, it's so comforting. I think that's another reason why I love my ambient room videos, which again, I will have the playlist above. It's just feeling not alone and not lonely, and but just having just like a mood and aesthetic and just like this peacefulness um, and coziness about you. So I thought that maybe it'd be kind of fun to do one of those videos. We just read together for an hour because I know a lot of you guys are also readers so I don't know let me know if that sounds interesting probably gonna try it out anyway because I think it sounds fun and it's a good way to be able to film something for you guys but also an excuse for me to read <laughs> I'm like I gotta film a video and I'm just reading for an hour anyway um that's all so finally the end of this video um I'm so sorry for the chaos but thank you again so much for watching I'll see you guys very soon in my next one bye guys